What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing good. Today, I am joined by one of the most dominant defensive players in the NFL today. He's a Miami Dolphin, uh, Miami Dolphin defensive end, Bradley Chubb. How you doing today, man? Thank you for, you know, taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, join us for episode of Community Voices. How you feeling? Feeling good, man. Doing real well, actually. And of course, man, I always got time to talk about, you know what I'm saying, what I'm doing in the community and, and stuff like that and how we can better up the community in the future. So I'm, I'm always down for that. I love it. I love it. Well, let's get things started. You know what I mean? So, you know, you come from an actual football family, a family full of athletes. Um, I would love mm -hmm. to kind of just like know what was it like growing up in a family, you know, with a father who played in the league and kind of was there ever like an expectation for you and your brother to like go pro at an early age, just like, you know, earlier on in your careers? Uh, I would say no, um, just because like my dad, I feel like back in the day, never like pushed us to play football. Like we always saw like the jerseys that he had in the in the house and like the trophies and stuff. So we always like wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, like as kids and stuff, yeah, okay, yeah, get your pads. We're going to football practice, blah, blah, blah. But like when we got down to like high school, middle school, it was more of a, at that point, you take this the step to start training a little bit extra and you can't really just do what everybody else does if you want to stand out. So, right. um, he kind of left that up to us and we would have to like go to tell him like, Hey dad, let's go to training or Hey dad, let's do this. So uh, I, I, I really appreciate how he kind of let us fall in love with it instead of like forcing it onto us. And um, after that, man, we kind of put those expectations on ourselves. Like he never said anything for us, but once I saw my brother go to division one and okay, now my dad and my brother went to division one, I can't be the only one who can't, who didn't do it or can't do it. You know what I mean? So it kind of like had that healthy competition to it a little bit, but it was never like a forced thing or never like a, you have to do this because, you know what I mean? So it, it always was a steady thing that we we grew in and, and fell in love with. I love that. I love that. And I, I do want to fast forward a little bit too. So, you know, in 2019, you had a brief setback. Um, yeah. I think one thing I think I've learned from sports too, especially even if you look at this past NBA season, you know, in injuries may be significant, but if like you can still bounce back from that and come back twice as strong. Um, when we've seen it time and time again. Um, but you know, in that moment, there's a lot of learning that happened, things that you can learn about yourself, things that you can learn about your game, things that you can learn about your mental toughness, physical toughness. During that time for you, kind of like what did you learn about yourself and kind of how did you um grow mentally and physically to overcome those things and re-solidify your value to yourself going into you know the next season and things like that yeah uh one thing man my, my faith in, in god has been tremendous ever since you know what i mean I, I was a kid and stuff like that and my parents instilled that into us so kind of when it happened um first off when it happened it happened the exact same day as the one i did in my high school year mm. um, my, my high school seven years to the date and then, like, if you look at my scar, it, make, it makes the number seven. So, like, all this was happening. I was oh. talking to my mom, and it was just like, yo, all this not happening for like for no reason. You know what I mean? And right. um, when I first got hurt, we uh, had a Bible verse, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Um, I, I know all the things I, I do for you, and, and plans to prosper you, and not to hurt you, and stuff like that. So, um, that's been my Bible verse ever since then. And uh, when twenty nineteen came around, it's kind of like. Like I said, with the with the set, the same exact day, the, the seven on the knee, like all that type of stuff kind of like brought me back to that and then brought me back to that foundation. And um, it, it, it really wasn't like, a, am I going to be OK? Like, yeah, you have those doubts and stuff like that, because we were, we're high, level, high level athletes and we never want to get hurt or feel like we're taking a step back and stuff like that. So, yeah, you have doubts originally. But once you like fall back on that foundation and that faith, man, it, it kind of propels you to do things you never thought you could do. Mm. I love that. I, that's a crazy story, by the way. Look, that's that's something that it's you crazy, can, bro. I'll show you. Like, Whoa! Hold on. I'll stand up. <laughs> it's like you see it. It's like that's oh, the first wow. card. It was like a seven. What's even crazier? Yeah, but, that it's like a seven. When I saw that, I was like, this yeah, this didn't happen for no reason. It was what's crazier to me too. It's, it's not just like a seven that's like outward facing. It's like inward. Like you look down and see. It's like it's yeah, like I'm looking at it. Feet. Right. Exactly. That's exactly. crazy. I'm like, man, that's really, that's, that's like really special too. That's really cool. Dang, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Well, like, you know, we're talking about adversity and how you bounce back. And also that is very true to have faith in yourself and your journey and knowing that I think I heard a quote recently and he was saying, um, you have to see the bright side of the BS too. You can't see the bright side of the good stuff. Like you have to see the bright side of everything anytime mm -hmm. life happens. So it's kind of going back to that faith piece, having faith that things happen for a reason that, you know, it's part of the journey to make you better, not tell you down. 
And, you know, right. also in 2020, you were voted to the Pro Bowl. You know what I mean? You were voted by fellow players, top 50 players in the, in the league last in that year. Like, I would kind of like to know, too, I know a lot of players said that some accolade, accolades don't mean that much to them. But what do those kind of things mean to you? And, like, what kind of goals outside of a championship do you set for yourself personally as, as well on the field? Yeah, uh, that's, that's that's a true statement, man. A lot of guys don't really care about athletes, and I'm one of those guys, man. I want to I want to have success, yes, but I want team success. I want Super Bowls. I want all the stuff that comes with the team success, yes. But that one right there was special to me because of all the things I had went through and, and all the like battles I was having with myself about, like I said, the the doubts and um, kind of knowing that like this happened for a reason, but still trying to figure out what the reason is and all, all that type of stuff. So when it uh, when I did get the nomination to be Pro Bowl, man, it was. I remember my coach called me and, and like, it, it's crazy. Cause that year I was having a good year, but like in my mind and my standards, I was like, Oh, it's all good. Like I'm coming back from injury. Okay. Like everybody understands that blah, blah, blah. And then, like the pro bowl votes will go out. I wouldn't even like promote it because I'm like, I, I don't deserve it this year. I'm going to get come back next year, blah, blah, blah. So um, it was just crazy, man. My coach called me. He was like, yeah, I just want to let you know that you uh pro bowl starter, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, I broke, that broke down in tears right then and there, man. Cause um, all the things, like I said, I had been through, all the things I had been thinking, like the doubts I was going through. Like, I, even like I felt like I wasn't my full self, but me not being my full self and still my peers think I'm a top 50 player in the league. I'm one of the best, you know what I'm saying, outside linebackers in the league. Like, that that means a lot because, like you said, you, you have those self-doubts, but then you so focused on being like, oh, this is not good enough for me, this is not good enough for me, that you don't even, like, realize the energy you're putting out into the world and and the the, the good things you're doing and, and stuff like that. So it, it helped me take a step back and realize, man, like, okay, all success is not, like, blaring and it, it's not going to feel good at all the times, but it's just let you know that you just got to keep moving, man, and, and everything happened for a reason. I love that. I love that. And, you know, we're talking about all the, like, the success and the way that you have just grown mentally and physically on the field, but – you do twice as much as work off the field, um, especially the field, with the Chubb sure. Foundation. Um, with this being episode, community voices will be donating 15k to the Chubb Foundation so that we can continue the mission. Um, you know, off the, off the field and having that same impact that you do, um, continuously just all around. Uh, I would love to kind of know, you know, earlier on, I think I mentioned that you know you and your brother came from a football family. Um, but your mom was also volunteer of the year in 2016. Fun fact, which is amazing. Um. Did your mom's philanthropy earlier on kind of have an effect on, you, you know, how you want to impact your community and start your own organization going forward in the future? Yeah, 100%, man, because, like, growing up, that was our main thing that we had to do, like, community service and service, serve serve others, like, whether that be the homeless, whether that be um, volunteering at a camp. Like, we always just had to do service. Like, that was always in our, our bloodline, our parents, just because we – I wouldn't say we had the most – resources or whatever growing up, but we were pretty solid, pretty stable. Everything we asked for, our parents were um, going above and beyond to get and stuff like that. So our parents always uh, uh, put into us, like you you get so much from from the world and from God and all this, like you got to put that that same energy into others and stuff like that. So we, we had that in our heads from a young age. And then um, 2017, I was still in college, but my brother had just finished and he wanted to um, he wanted to just go ahead and pop off the Chubb Foundation. And he had been talking to me about it. We had kind of like went back and forth on like what we wanted our like mission statement and stuff like that. And he kind of just set it all off. And, you know, back then in college, like you couldn't like the rules were weird. So I couldn't really do too much um, to give back into the community. I mean, to the uh, foundation and stuff. But I still did right. stuff with my um, team and all that type stuff. But um, when it came to the foundation wise, he was running everything, man. He was doing it. Uh, and still playing football in the NFL. So, like, you think about all the stuff he had to balance with that. Um, and then uh, he, he he had a couple different events. I can't, like, remember off the top of my head the events he did uh, before I, like, got into it. But mm -hmm. he had some events, man. He got the ball, like, really rolling. And it, I really appreciate him for that because when I came into the league that next year, 2018, it was kind of like a full steam ahead for our foundation. And it, it helped um, get those growing pains out of the way early. And it kind of, I feel like, when uh, we were both involved, it kind of speed, like our, our sped up our, it, like I said, took the growing pains away and sped up our, like our impact. I feel like it, it, it we were able to have a camp my, before I even played an NFL game. Like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. So it helped out getting, getting ahead of like the NFL schedule and all that type stuff. So it, it was dope for sure. 
I love it. Yeah, for sure. I definitely get what you're saying too. Like, you know, like those seeds are already planted, so you're coming into a garden that's more planted. Right. And now it's about really right. making sure that garden nor nourishes the community and things like that. So I, I definitely that totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. Um, and one thing too, you know, at a very high, very high, high level, the mission of of the organ of the foundation is to activate human potential. It's at a very high level description of the mission. Um, but you know, now that you've been more experienced with it and you know, been working together with them and y'all are, you know. 10 toes down in the whole foundation. Um, can you kind of explain to me what does that like mean to you? And how does that kind of like, how does that shape the foundation as they like attack these different, y'all attack, attack these different things and have these impacts and stuff like that. What does that activating human potential mean to the foundation as they go forward? Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously like our, our, how we got to this platform is playing football. You know, uh, we had the athletic ability that God bless us where we had the work ethic or whatever, and we got to this stage. But at the end of the day, like football is not the only thing that you need to be successful. Like there's many other pathways where people are high, very high, way more successful than I could ever be. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. So um, our main thing is like, yeah, we made it and we were successful off football, but we couldn't get to where we at without going to school, without uh, making sure we were excelling in the classroom because you can't get a scholarship if you're just a below average student or, you know what I mean? So we had to yeah. make sure we were excelled in the classroom. Every step of the way, we had to make sure we excel at. And so our main thing to these kids is um, like, yeah, we did it all football, but it doesn't have to be football, man. We have entrepreneurship uh, programs. We got tutorship, tutor and mentorship programs as well. And um, just letting these kids know that like it, it doesn't matter what you do to, that you feel like is success. Like as long as you put your mind to it, as long as you, um, have a, a good community support, a good backbone, a good foundation. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Like you could be successful and you could put your mind to it and and change the world however you want to change it. I love that. I want to ask one more thing on, on the foundation piece. What was like mm -hmm. your most memorable or uh, most impactful for you personally um, activity that you've done with the foundation? Uh, so in 20, the summer of 2019, we had our first uh, Move the Needle program which is like our uh, entrepreneurship program mm, um dope. so we went to a class with about 15 to 20 kids and they're all, all within fifth through seventh no they were even younger than that they were probably through third through sixth grade or something like that and um it was just dope man just because we had uh, the prompt was um make something that you think your neighborhood needs and they had like six six seven weeks to like come up with the idea, come up with a pitch. And then me and my brother kind of like sat on stage and had like a, a shark tank type uh, thing. And they um, had their family, their, their classmates and all these people um, in the stands as they were pitching to us, their idea that they made in groups and stuff like that. And just to see the creativity come out of these kids' minds, man, it was it was honestly the the most satisfying thing we ever did, man, because these kids were, look, were making stuff for their neighborhood. So stuff that they need, that they see every day, and they were finding a way to put their twist on it. Like one thing that stood out to me was like a, a they it was like a group of four kids. They had a, a gun that you needed a fingerprint in order to release the trigger or something like that. And like hmm. third, fourth graders thinking of stuff like that. It's crazy. Like they see gun violence every day in their neighborhoods, and they want to do something to change it. You know what I mean? So it just kind of got all that all those juices flowing, man. It, it was dope because you really think like, man, we could change lives like this. And these kids are they don't know right from wrong but they see that you know what i'm saying that we're trying to instill right into them so okay i'm gonna go towards this direction or i'm gonna go towards this path and and that's the most satisfying thing ever just such, such a such a important age to have an impactful moment on a child too like you don't know what that sure. one moment in their lives or that 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 project the time span they took to complete that project would do for them as they go into high school college like exactly those moments are so important. So as much as that's, that's awesome that y'all even offering that kind of thing to lead the future leaders, really, if we're being honest. So that's super awesome. I could, that's really special. Now, I, I want to transition uh, back to your career a little bit, too, because, you know, when you came in, you play, you, you, first off, you played next to many greats. You played against the greats, you played next to so many greats. I mean, you came into the league and, you know, joined NFL, Bron uh, the NFL Broncos, Denver Broncos, and you know, Vaughn Miller, who was like a vet, a great, took you under his wing as well. I know that kind of experience and from on the field and off the field, I, I can only imagine how much that helped you grow and, and really um get acclimated to the NFL and professional level. I would love to know, you know, going down 
the road of your career being where you are now, what has been some of the most valuable knowledge you've learned in your career? And like, what of that knowledge, what have you had to reflect on most recently for yourself? That's a good question. Uh, I was, I, I learned a lot of things, man, just cause I'm an open book when it comes to uh, like big group settings and stuff like that. Like, I don't, I'm not going to be the one talking and leading the, the conversation and stuff. I'm going to just sit back and see what everybody else says and how everybody else thinks and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, um, like just my first two, three years, I was just soaking up game, man. You like to say we had Von Miller, we had Justin, all pro Justin Simmons, Chris Harris, um, Bradley Roby, like Super Bowl check, like, cause they weren't that far off removed from winning the Super Bowl not too right. long ago. So, um, I just learned a lot of things, man. And, and most of it wasn't about football, which is crazy because football is going to be football. And you, you, you kind of, once you're in it for about three, four years, man, you, you know what you're doing, you know how to do this. And like, yeah, you always learn more, but, um, those gems from like the greats that you get, man, it, it, they going to tell you the yeah about football, but it's about like life at the end of the day. So, man, the main thing I learned from all those guys was, um, how to treat rookies, man. Cause when I came in, yeah, we got haircuts. Yeah. We went through the rookie stuff. Yeah. But it was like top notch, man. I didn't have to pay like a thousands of dollars for a rookie dinner. All I had to do was be consistent with getting the room snacks and making sure everybody had a smile on their face. I probably had to tell a joke here and there, sing a little song or here and there, but um, they always treated me with respect. They always treated me with, uh, you know, like just like I was uh, been there for, for years. And when you got a guy coming in, not really knowing kind of, you know what I mean? Everything's new to them. And then everybody opens them with open arms. Yeah, I'm going to feel right at home and I'm going to go out and play for you, play for you. Cause I want to make sure that y'all, have Hall of Fame careers. I want to make sure I have a Hall of Fame career and we're going to do this together. You know what I mean? So it, it was really, it was really dope how they took me in and, and and kind of just showed me the game from the jump. I love that. I love that. Now, you know, too, I know you mentioned, you know, when you've been in the league for a minute, you know, it's almost like second nature when you're on the field and what you need to do and mm -hmm. what you tap into and all those kind of things. But what I think I found interesting too, especially at this point in your career, there's like a different level of like leadership that you have now when you're yeah. on the field and you're with the team. Um, because, you know, I think, you know, I personally, I believe the defense really wins games. And to yeah. have that leadership on the field, I think is extremely important. And you showcase that all the time. But I would love to know, too, how do you balance that on the field, you know, leadership, but then also, like, taking care of your role? Because at the same time, you have to lead by example when you're on the field. But you also want to make sure, that, like, you're doing your best to make sure everybody's on point and firing on all cylinders so how do you find what what is for you the best way to balance those two things when you're on the field the best way to balance it for me is just to make sure I'm 100% on my game you know what I mean because if I'm even at 90% I'm trying to tell you what to do you're not gonna listen to me because I'm not I'm not where I need to be you know what I mean I, I just <laughs> right. messed up so you know what I mean so um I just got to make sure I'm good and whether that be with the playbook whether that be with the um like different checks and stuff we have at the line like I just got to make sure that everything is kind of and that's what, what the role I've been trying to take on, man. Just trying to know everybody's job on the field, not to tell you what to do, but just to like, I know how to better my, how I play that play or a certain gap scheme or run scheme or anything like that. So, um, and I think that's, that's where, where leadership is, man. Being able to take control of yourself and bring along other people with you. And if people seeing me not messing up on plays and going hundred percent to the ball and all that, like, I don't really have to do too much. It's, this is going to, my energy and all that's, it is people just going to gravitate towards that. You know what I mean? So um, that's been my main thing is, is taking care of myself first, not in a selfish way, but just making sure that I'm good. So everybody around me um, is good as well. For sure. That leading by example piece is always going to be important. Like you said, if somebody sees you not doing anything, why should I take advice from you? So I love that, 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 right. that, that leading by example. Piece. You could be, you could, you could be Super Bowl champ. You can have all the accolades, but if you're not doing the stuff right each and every day, yeah, you got success, but that's not that's not for everybody, you know. So exactly, that's my main thing. Try to be the same person every day. One hundred percent. Now, you know, because I know you're busy. Even even though this the season's right around the corner, but I still know that everything mm -hmm. that has to be that has to happen in the in, in between time is very important. So I want to um make sure I respect your time. I want to ask you one last question. You know, so when it's all said and done, you know, I, I know, I know you have much more in your career going. But when it's all said and done, I would love to know in your mind at this point in your career, because I could ask you this question two years later and it could change. Mm -hmm. um, but at this point in your career, what is like the legacy that you want to leave behind? And really what plans do you have to continue to prosper off the field? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Legacy I want to leave behind, like at this point, um, mm -hmm. is because I've been on losing teams, man, since I've been in the league, to be honest with you. And um, we made it to the playoffs as I got traded last year. And um, it was like a first time for me in the playoffs seeing that experience and like 
feel like as a team, we didn't, I'm not going to say we didn't believe we could win, but like we had a lot of stuff going against us and a lot of doubters, a lot of all this. And we went to the game. Like I said, not saying that we didn't think we were going to win, but probably not as confident as we wanted to be, you know? Yeah. And we lost by three points to the Bills who went on, win two more games and stuff like that. So like, we understand that. Oh, well, I understand seeing that, that no matter what it is, no matter what the odds are, like just go out there and, and play to 100% of your abilities. And my main thing is I want a Super Bowl now. I felt that. I felt the, the playoffs. I see what it's like. Okay. Okay. We could have won that game and could have made a run. But now I want the Super Bowl. That's why I want my legacy to be now. And uh, off the field, man, I just want um, – it's kind of on the field too, but I want uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year as well at some point in my career. Just not to justify all the things I'm doing, but just to like – you know what I'm saying? To, to get the foundation name out there even more. Like just to – show the world what we what we've been doing and how we could do it even better and, and and bring more people along with us and stuff like that because i feel like that that award just gives you all the um resources and and, and anything you need honestly so that's what i want for my foundation and for uh these kids coming up in the future i love it. i was just about to say the same thing like some people think if you want an award it's like oh like they're just doing it for a selfish reason but sometimes those things are what opens up doors to really but maximize course, the yeah. potential so exactly. I love it. Yeah, we're doing it right right now. We're doing everything we can right now. But like I said, with just a, a little bit more back and a little bit more, whatever it may be, a little bit more notoriety. A, a lot of people might not know about the Chubb Foundation. A lot of people might want to give to a foundation, but they don't know which one to give to. You know what I mean? So it's just not, I don't want to win it for myself at all. I want to win it for the foundation and the kids that we could impact in the future. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Well, man, listen, thank you so much. For joining us i appreciate your time I, i'm i'm rooting for you this season i'm gonna be keeping an eye out on you this season man you I got my prayer for everything on the field as you go on so I, I know it's gonna be a great season for you and i really appreciate you taking out some time to you know join us for episode of community voices man sure no doubt man i appreciate you having me on of course thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of community voices we will see y'all next time take care peace